everyone thank you for coming to my channel and today we are still on the topic of Romans 7 and we are going to be looking at Romans 8 because Romans 8 is a continuation of Romans 7 and we can see in Romans 7 that Paul describes a nature within man that is contrary or contradicts the nature of God and the nature that God requires that is that one that he created in the garden. He created one, uh, he created man in his image and in his likeness. One that uh, can relate to him in his holiness and in his perfection. It was through the coercion of Satan that when he got in that corrupted man and now man is, uh, is, imperfect man is, he stands deficient lacking needing needing uh, uh needing uh reprogramming basically reprogramming a change and only through god can this change occur and it is part of the new covenant that we see this uh this change this change this uh, solution to our problem, the, the nature with man, we did, uh, uh, we through one man, sin entered into the world. So through one man, it's not the fault of, of our inabilities or capabilities. It is through the fault of Adam's sin and sin fell on all man. So the, 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 uh, the solution to this problem is Jesus Christ. So Jesus came and he took care of this problem within. Now we have, we have a solution. We have a resolution. But it is up to us to be able to uh, receive this antidote and be able to walk it out in accordance to uh, the, the transformation. See... It's the sanctification and transformation that people are getting hung up on. They are getting hung up on on how do we how do we obtain this righteousness? How do we be how do we become righteous when we in ourselves are not righteous? And where 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 do we arrive to this righteousness? See, we see the failures. We see sin working within our nature, within our with our uh, own uh, design. It, uh, it says, "Oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of death?" The body of death it, it has uh, passions and desires, and wants and it wants to seek its own will. And it and it and its own pleasures and its own passions it, is contrary. It's it's not submissive. It does not. It, it wants. It wants. It doesn't want to submit to a higher authority. It doesn't want to submit to uh, to uh, any authority. It doesn't want to submit. It has a nature that wants to kick back. And, and like I, I spoken before, that you know, like that, like the animal that was being sacrificed, you know, outside the gate. It gave its life willingly, and it had no idea that. It was being sacrificed. Like I said, it was very humane. They they uh, cut the throat of the animal and let the life's blood drain out. And it didn't have any trauma or contamination or sin. Yes, it was exposed to the sin. The whole world was affected by the sin that what that came into our cosmos. But it but it didn't resist. It didn't kick back. If it kicked back and resist the sacrifice, then it would become a contaminated sac uh, a sacrifice and would not be acceptable by, uh, up on that altar. And this is exactly what God is doing. He is he, he, he's wanting to bring us into a place of death where the body, yeah, we're living sacrifices, but the, the, but the body is not be uh, is not the one that is in charge it is being it is god that is in charge it's his uh, is it's, it's your relationship and your connection to uh to the to the holy spirit he is leading those who 
are led of the spirits become sons of God. Those who are willing to submit to his way of life, which is one of forgiving, one of long suffering, one of compassion and love, which is sacrificial love, not love that, uh, that, that is got limitation it's unconditional love and we have to work and operate in this same kind of love that god requires because he is love his nature is love his his uh, uh his nature is one of being merciful and kind and gentle and long-suffering uh, it, you know, he gives us his attributes, his character, and he is he is trying to form us and forge us into that same kind of love. But if we put try to put on a form of godliness without the transformation inside, then we we are we are a walking lie. We are a walking contradiction. We have to be uh, we have to be unified in our uh, in in in, in spirit soul mind and body we have to be transformed our hearts got to be transformed which we are transforming our the nature of our soul through the word of god and through the holy spirit and then our bodies will come under the same come under subjection to our soul so the spirit is what dictating to our soul and body how it should behave and sometimes uh, we would be in a situation where Satan knows that certain things will trigger us and he will cause us to get into uh, hard circumstances and situation where we will be triggered to, to be uh, angry or to speak our mind or be, uh, be aggressive in areas when we feel like we are being assaulted, when we feel like we're being put under a, some kind of uh, distress. So, so the enemy is really good at putting us under the pressures, but God allows us to be under those pressures because he wants to reveal those things that are still uh, resides in us that have not been dealt with that we can go and, and you know, and and seek for God's ability to control these behaviors in our lives. You know, we we have all have certain things, uh, certain things that are kind of, you know, motivate our lives or kind of, uh, you know, is our, uh, you know, pressure points in life that get us or, you know, that move us. That some things might not move one person, but it may move another person. So Satan is always working on us. He's he's studying us to make, you know and trying to figure out what what uh, what your vice is in life. What is your vice, and how can he manipulate your vice to either on the side of pleasure or on the side of distress? Because he wants to push your buttons on the pleasure sides or on the uh you know on the physical side or on the emotional side so so that he can keep us in the realm of sin keep us a, an un a, an unacceptable sacrifice unacceptable uh before god this is why the body has to be subdued the passions the emotions the motions of sin have to be uh, be you know have to be uh, put under the guidance of the Holy Spirit that we because we will go about living our life naturally thinking that we're doing good thinking that we're we are we're just going about doing what what we feel in our nature is right but but is contrary or it contradicts the nature of God. And it contradicts his uh, the nature, his heavenly realm. This is why we must have a nature change. We must not that we can put on a form of godliness and put on religion, but we've got to have the nature of God. What what was that nature in the garden? What what did Adam have? Adam and Eve, what were they created with? Were they created 
with all these emotions, with all this distress and stress in their life? Were they created with all the uh, the insecurities, with all with all the all the problems that we deal with today, psychological problems? No, all the negativity, all the rejection, all the hatred. No, he did not. They were not created with any of those with with those characteristics or those natures he he they were in the realm of life they were in the realm of love they were in the realm of life in christ jesus being motivated and led by the spirit which is the author of life and love and light they had no darkness in them until the serpent came the serpent brought in the the darkness brought in the confusion brought in the 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 animosity the resentment the hate hatefulness brought in all those negative responses they did not know lust until lust was presented to them they desired to uh they uh, having good uh, like eve eve desired to have the uh the wisdom the wisdom uh and and he was telling her that she could have uh this knowledge this knowledge from the uh, knowledge of, of the tree of good and evil but that she could have esoteric knowledge or exclusive knowledge and she desired wisdom there is nothing wrong with desiring wisdom. The Bible says that we are to uh, desire wisdom. We are to desire the things that are God, that are godly, and that, and that He He wants to impart. He said, if you if you ask for wisdom, ask Him from above, and He will give us freely His wisdom. Uh, so he, she just went to the wrong uh, the wrong pathway. She went to the wrong. Uh, source of this wisdom and because she went on the wrong uh, to the wrong source it became a perversion and a distortion and and so and it became lust so it's nothing wrong to desire to z desire wisdom understanding and have and and have desire love and have desire things god gives us desires and passions but if they're outside of God if they're outside of God's will if they're outside of, of, of get, getting them outside of his source his reservoir of and his and his way and his, his and his source of life then we err then we deviate we fall and and this is exactly what happened with Adam and Eve they fell into the temptation they fell into the lie he, she was deceived. She thought she was going to get wisdom. She was going to get understanding and knowledge. And she went outside the source that God had designed. She was supposed to go to Adam. And both of them were to go to God for all of their, uh, all the answers to their questions. And, and, to, and they were to receive of God the source of life. And this is, as Jesus is our second Adam, he provides this source of life. It says, therefore, there is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. So the condemnation, he condemned us in our sins. So we are condemned in the nature in this flesh. In the, in the Adamic nature, we are condemned to die. We are condemned to, to the body of death. And, and 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 it's uh, uh and it's outputs and 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 it's and it's uh you know we're condemned to the body of death which is dying daily through to its sicknesses to its uh to its deficiencies to its uh hurts and pains and 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 to and its lack and its inabilities so we're and so and in its nature to and passions, which will lead us to more death. But ultimately, the body is doomed to die, to go back to the dust. 
And so the body is connected to the earth and its resource or its source of life is the earth because we gain air or oxygen and we gain all our resources from the earth. This is what we, this is why when men's resources resources are messed with, when Satan messes 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 with our resources, then everybody gets all uptight. They get all in a frenzy. They get it. They get very worried and they fret and they get and they and they become panicked because this is our source of life the life of the earth what it provides the food this uh, and the and the uh sustaining air and water and all the yes we all need that to sustain sustain the body but god is wanting us to get outside of this being our resource he knows he says i know that you have need for clothing and for food and for raiment and for shelter i know that your body needs these things but i do not want you to seek these things seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you so this is why he, he, this is why he says not to focus on necessarily the the conditions of the body but we are to focus on righteousness and his kingdom, which is the kingdom of life, light, and love. So, and this is why the nature of God is love. The nature and his attribute and his character is love. And he gave his only begotten son. And his object of love is through his son. His expression of love is through his son. And his expression is to provide us a way out of this this uh, this condemning body and this and this world that is going to be burnt up. It's going to uh, perish. So it says, therefore, there is no condemnation th uh, them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life, which is the realm of life, is the eternal life, is everlasting life. It is, it is Zoe life. It's not the life that here. This life is physical life, but the life and the kingdom that Jesus uh, administrates from is the eternal life. The uh, the uh, where. He sets as king over principalities, powers, and rulers over, over the kingdoms that are in the unseen. And he offers this life to all of us who want to come into his life. Spirit of life in Christ Jesus that has made me free from the law of sin and death. So the law of sin and death that resides in us, well, in our cosmos. That, that is what he has set us free from. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. So in, in the likeness, Jesus came in the likeness. He came in flesh. Anyone who says he did not come into flesh is antichrist. He came as a, as a man, in, as a second addition to the prototype of Adam in the likeness of sinful flesh, but his flesh had no sin or death residing in it. It came forth from the Father. So his soul is the soul that was offered up for our sacrifice, for our, for our propitiation. So we, he's the one that through his obedience through his faithful obedience through his relationship with the father through him he made he made a pathway for us to come and to uh to to a pathway to come into this realm of life through it's it's been created on the foundation of christ it, 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 the, the, he is the chief cornerstone. So the, he, the foundation to the kingdom that he has given us that is in the unseen realm 
it, and, and it's built up, you know, and, he, and he's building it up with our participation and our willingness to go and, you know, and, and compel men to come in. It's the Great Commission. We compel others to come up and he builds this up. He's building up his kingdom or he's building up Zion or Zion. He's building up something that is outside of this world and that and it's spiritual because he offered his soul which is spiritual he offered his his blood not just the blood red blood that we see on the surface but he offered up his soul unto death he poured out his soul. That is something that is unseen. That is not some. We cannot see our spirit and soul. It, it is housed in a body. Once this bottle or this flesh is broken, once it's broken down, once it is inoperable, the soul will be, uh, will, will go into the unseen realm. It is like a bottle being broken. It will leave this body and it will go into a into the eternal realm, either eternal life or eternal damnation. But it will not stay in this physical realm. And, and through Jesus Christ and through the foundation of his kingdom made a way for souls to enter in. It is on the basis of that blood. It's on the basis of his uh, of his soul being poured out it's in this realm that he captures other souls it doesn't have a physical body do you see what i mean it doesn't have uh you know all the uh components it is just a breath your breath your soul and your spirit they are connected in their breaths or pneuma and they and the, uh, and they leave the body and they will either go into this realm captured into his soul, uh, with, which has been redeemed, because you have been redeemed by his blood, and he has taken you into his realm, or you will be taken into the realm of darkness, where there is eternal damnation. This is, there is a uh, there is a crossing, a crossroads, a crossing point with where you know there there is a divide that cannot they cannot cross they cannot cross and you have to go you're either going one way or the other and so but to be that to be the son of man the son of god and the son of uh, david he had to qualify and he had to uh make a, a ram uh, uh, he had to rectify all the all the uh, areas where Adam sinned. Sin, uh, sin came in and he was the son of God and he was the son of man and he was within the kingdom of God which God established through the Melchizedek which I believe he was the first Melchizedek, Melchizedek king of righteousness that held in the position that uh, that uh, that that all righteous men were given the scepter. He had the scepter. He had the tree of life, and he was in the house of God. He was the first husbandman or uh, governor of God's house. He was the administrator to God's house and the earth, and he was the mediator between the earth and him. So he he held all these offices. So. Everything that Adam was in the in the creation story and in, in the garden and all the titles that God gave him, gave him, Christ had to qualify for. He had to reverse. He had to go back and reverse the curse, reverse the uh, the uh, the uh, deficiencies. He had to go back and do everything over again to make restitution for Adam and all his lineages, his lineage, all his, uh, so all that are born under Adam could come and be born under Christ. So this is, there's a lot to unpack there, but this is what he did. In the likeness of sinful flesh, he became the son of Adam or the son of man 
that was without sin and death and became that soul sacrifice like the animal releasing his blood releasing his his life so did christ release his life for all man willingly without without any resistance it, you know he said if it be thy will O father let thy will be done lord if it if, if this cup can pass but if not let thy will be done he wasn't he he asked the question he didn't he wasn't resisting the the direction that god had had planned for him this was the plan this was the only remedy this is the only way for uh, for humanity to be saved to to for those that were in the that were uh, that were held in abraham's bosom to the futuristic people that were going to receive him in the in, in before the you know, before and after the cross those who were you know that were there from the beginning and there's who are going to be there at the end he paid that payment so that all could receive it is your choice to receive it without without you coming into this uh, this uh, bridge you have to you have to come across the bridge and you've got to make that choice which side you're going to come on there is a drawn there is a line being drawn and you and there is no there is no deviation you if you you got to come into christ or you go into the realm of darkness or damnation and this world is that broad path and the religions of this world and everything that is enticing to the flesh will lead you on the broad path but on the narrow path on that bridge going to the narrow way is only in messiah only in jesus christ only through his his righteousness is coming into him but it is not a, a, a freedom to to sin no we it is a sacrifice when you're accepting his sacrifice that means that you are being you are willing are, are also saying that you're going to be willing to lay down your life as a living sacrifice it's not like jesus gave the the sacrifice and the and the, and we just get to admire that no we have to make a choice of coming into this the into the sacrifice of christ coming into his sacrifice coming into his uh into into him and be willing to lay our lives down this is what the scripture is all about laying our lives down for him not that we uh, we continue in sin or do we continue in bad behaviors or we continue no we come into him and we acknowledge our bad behaviors and we and we through the spirit put to death the deeds of the flesh we put to death the deeds of our 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 negative attitudes and in our and our things that we have inherited through the serpent all the things that deal with rejection and hatred and and death and 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 all those things that uh resentment unforgiveness um bitterness everything uh anything that has to do with that realm we have got to be put we got to put that to death we've got to re remove these things through the blood of jesus and this is why we that we uh, apply his blood we we make uh we take his blood and body uh you know even though it's ceremonial we take it often it to represent our that we are also going to die the death that's our we're going to be that sacrifice that we're going to allow the spirit through us mortify the deeds of the flesh we're going to mortify our passions we're going to mortify the uh the uh the 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 passions of sin and the and the and the uh desire within to sin that you know the and the and the things that cause us that trigger us to to uh to respond in sin 
the emotion, the emotion of sin. These are the things that we have to bring under subjection, mortify. God said not to cultivate them, not to make excuses for them, but to mortify them, remove them, and not and not to and not to uh, 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 you know and what, what we do we we make excuses for sin, and we uh, and uh, we make provisions for sin, and we ignore sin. We, 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 we want to always think about the good. We always want to think about the love of God. We only, we only want to think about the mercies of God. But we never want to think about His justice. So we, we put out the things that we don't want to deal with. We don't want, we don't, we don't want to think upon the things. We want, to, uh, we, we, we want to excuse those things or, or push back or not to. We don't want to acknowledge or, or, uh, or even be um, humble ourselves uh, in the notion that we have sinned we have uh, failed God or we have failed in this area or we are failed we don't want to acknowledge our failures our inadequacies inadequacies and our deficiencies so we ignore them but what God is saying we're that's not how you mortify them you've got to confront these things you've got to see these things you know even if they're you know, hard to look at where to acknowledge them, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly within to be able to resolve them, to extinguish them, to, to uh, remove them through the blood of Jesus. We, you know, we have to, uh, we have to, you know, we have to come with a humble heart and say, and, and then uh, and repent and then apply the blood and remove the, the object that continues to uh, be uh, responsive, that demon within that responds to certain things within the world or within people or within, and, and that keeps us in the powers of sin or in the dominion of sin. These things have to be recognized, and we have to notice these things in within ourselves, and we uh, and we have to combat them confront them and combat them and remove them so that we can live in the liberty which God has given us, the liberty through the Spirit which is free from sin. And it says, and so that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after spirit. See, there's, there, is, uh, there is a condition those who walk not after the flesh and those who do not respond to the flesh, these people, the, uh, the, those people who do not respond to the flesh but responds to the word of God, responds to the heart of God, responds to the, to the spirit of God and the leading of the spirit, then they, they walk after the spirit and they fulfill the law of righteousness, the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. One of a of a circumcised heart with his laws of fidelity, his laws of of commitment, his law of compassion, long suffering, goodness, and mercy. These are the uh, there which there is no law. This is why in Timothy there is no law when there is actual love being fulfilled that the law the nature of god the law uh is, is it the ten commandments yes we've got there is laws that are written upon our hearts but how we to you know just how we have to treat god how we how we're to treat man but are they are are they just defined in those ten commandments or they're just Ten, uh, ten uh, areas of concern that we need to recognize. But isn't the law of God more than just keeping ten commandments? Is it His law love more broad than that? Is the the uh, the understanding and the explanations of life more broad than ten commandments or ten words? Isn't there uh, 
subjective things underneath those uh, laws that we must t take and consider. His law, which is written on our heart, is a law that is of love. And love can't really be defined. Love cannot be defined. And it comes from a nature change and it comes from a spirit that is drawing you and compelling you. That's, that's the difference than just obeying words, outlines, that, that, that they're your own definition, but you're having, but these are just, these are just a, 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 a heading to much more deeper more deeper um uh, a deeper walk and a deeper understanding to god's requirement of righteousness so anyways there is there is much we we can go there's so many levels there's sub laws i believe sub laws to the law that are just been written down and so and this is why people when they you know when they write a law they always have amendments or they always have sub laws or they're always adding to the law because there's so many areas of life that are unexplained that we you have to make a law for you got to make amendment to because this this thing was not addressed at the initial giving of the law so there's this is a continuation to a law and this is exactly what the law of the spirit is it is a continuation of law that is of the law of christ jesus because it's eternal law how how deep are your the bible says how deep how, how who and how are we to know god he, the the depths of his riches let me look at that uh how let's see How, what is the depths of his of, to knowing God or to uh, to his glory it says that Romans hallelujah the depths of him we, who is to know the mind of God or the depths of his of him we, we cannot know him in his full essence, in his full knowledge. Let's see. I thought maybe I could look it up. Ooh. Hallelujah. But anyways, we'll go back. Uh, so anyways, let's see. So we don't those. So the righteousness comes for those who have who did, who who mortify the deeds of the flesh, and who walk in the law of the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So to be carnally minded, the carnal mind uh, thinks upon the physical realm, thinks upon their emotions, thinks upon, thinks upon of the, the body, the mind, the soul, the, uh, their surrounding, the societies around them, the social groups, uh, material things, resources, lack of or abundance of. They're thinking on temporal life, carnal life. But the mind that stays on Christ, the mind that stays upon his word, meditates on his word day and night, they have life, Zoe life, and they have peace because their life is not caught up in this, in this realm. They're caught up in another realm because the carnal mind is intimacy, intimacy, yeah, I'm sorry against God for it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be so our minds our carnal minds do, does not want to be submissive to 
to any authority, any, any power above us, uh, unless it benefits us, unless we're getting some kind of investment, a return on our investment, or we see the negative side. We, we submit to the officers or the governance of the land because there's laws put in place of punishment. So the so when we see there's a, a recourse or ramifications against oh, disobeying the laws, then we take notice that we don't want to obey. But you're not you don't you don't want to disobey, but you want to obey, but not because you love the officer, or not because you love the government, or not because you love. No, you you want the benefits. You want, just like in this country, they don't love this country. They love the benefits of the country. They love what the country offers. They love, they love uh, the, uh, the, uh, the freedom, the free enterprise or the republic of uh, capitalism. That's what they love. They love materialism and they love that. That's what they love. They don't love the government. They don't love the people they don't love they just love the idea of 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 ownership free enterprise they love the idea of of wealth that's what they love so the heart is really motivated by money not by their affection towards god or they only want god for the benefit of bringing in the resources, bringing in the prosperity, bringing in the wealth. That's they only love the God that brings in wealth. They are not submitted to the God of this Bible. They're not submitted to the rules of this book. They're not or to the order of this book, which is a conditional order of of transformation to the lightness and the character of God who wrote the book, which is love, love unconditionally, love sacrificially. That's the love that we are to, we are to give our, of ourselves. But if you ask any patriot, if they would give all their wealth away and, and follow Christ, none would give a, you know, just like that, a man that came to Jesus and asked him, I've kept the commandments all my life. I've done this, I've done that, I've done that. And he said, well, if you know, well, you lack one thing. Sell all that you have and come and follow me. And the, and the rich ruler or the rich young man said, no, I mean, he went away sadly. He could not give up his possessions. He could not give up his wealth. He could not give up his God of, of wealth, of and mammon, and mammon. So, mammon, sorry about that. So, this is why people are confused with the God of this book and the God of mammon. That they believe gives them prosperity, gives them wealth, gives them notoriety, gives them power. That's the God that they serve. They don't serve the God of this book that says, uh, sacrifice it all and come and follow me. No, that's not the God that they want to serve. They want to serve another God. And the, most people are only highlight the blessings. They never highlight the conditions. How do you get the blessings? How do you get spiritual blessings? How do you get the power? How do you get to walk in the realm of uh, like the apostles did? It's sacrifice. That, and most people do not look at this book as one of being one of sacrifice one of putting yourself on the altar one of giving of yourself freely and it says um as a living sacrifice so so then they that are in the flesh cannot please god so anything that is in the flesh cannot please god but ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit is so that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And Christ, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. 
But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Mortify the deeds of the body. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. So, I mean, like, so anyways, let, let's, look, let's look at this. It says, but ye are not in the flesh. But ye are not in the flesh. So you no longer hold uh, your residency in the body. It, the body, yes, you live in the body, but this body is not your home. This body is, is temporal. This body is, uh, is subject to die. This body is going to perish. This body is not the end of the matter. So you do not live in accordance to this body. That means if you don't live accordance to this body, you don't also, you don't live according to the world or to the earth because these are the resources that sustain the body. The world is there for pleasure to give you pleasure, to give you a sense of, of motivation, of, of life, life of sustaining life. You live in this world, you work a job, you have to maintain and sustain your living. So everything in the world is to sustain your living, your living and you buy, you buy goods to re, uh, and material things to maintain a status and to and to maintain and sustain the uh, the function of the body. So everything in the world is to maintain the flow of the body, the function of the body, and the and the mind, and to and to, and it offers you the uh, pleasures in the body, or even the not even not only in the pleasure, but also the the uh, obligation to maintain maintain worldly things to a, to maintain a livelihood you have to maintain a, some source of, of livelihood a uh, job you have to maintain a, a, a shelter you have to maintain a vehicle you have to maintain food and clothing you have to maintain uh, 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 things for your children so there's constant things within our realm that maintain the function of a family or or the body and or the the livelihood of of ourselves and our loved ones. So this is this is this has been created to keep us occupied on carnal things because we're constantly good or bad focused on carnal conditions carnal conditions, carnal ways of life, uh, carnal um, um, promotions in life, or if we uh, go through, um, you know, failures in life, or we go through uh, difficulties in life, and we lose in life, then we're focused on that. How do we gain in life? How do we gain? As our bodies are perishing, we're still constantly have to maintain a, 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 a uh, avenue of, of being able to support ourselves. So this is this is the object of the enemy to keep us focused here on carnal living. But the Bible says that the carnal mind is is at war or intimate with with the mind of the spirit because the mind of the spirit thinks on the things to please the Father to please. Uh, to to maintain a spiritual life, we uh, focus on uh, on our relationship. Uh, you know, the Bible says that ma man do not live by bread alone, but by every word that cometh out of the mouth of God. Or to gain a spiritual life, you must you must also cultivate a spiritual livelihood. And there's nothing in this world or earthly that will maintain you a, 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 and, and, and cultivate and, and sustain a spiritual life. That is only done through your participation, your initiation, and your willingness 
to uh, to engage in spiritual matters, spiritual uh, 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 a spiritual course of life. It, it this life actually interferes with one that is trying to gain spiritual life. Because it, they're 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 contrary, they're contradict each other. They're they're not one of the same. You have to maintain a spiritual life. You have to you have to give up this physical life. A lot of the aspects of this physical life must be put to put to death. Must be uh, be uh, done away with. You can you can't engage in certain things. You have to put limitations. You can't indulge yourself. You have to put restrictions because it will swallow up your spiritual life. But you want your spiritual life to grow. You want your spiritual life to dominate the physical life. You want your relationship with God and your you being in tune with Him to supersede this physical life. And that takes time of cultivation. It takes time of, of engaging in prayer and in this word to gain that kind of life. And this is why that the carnal life is at war or the carnal mind that seeks on the things of the earth is at war or intimate with God because God is wanting you to come into spiritual things. He wants you to come into spiritual matters. He wants you to, uh, to, cause he is, he says, uh, he is, he is one of spirit. God is spirit, and he's seeking those who is, uh, worship him in spirit and in truth. So he's spirit, and he and you are spirit, and he wants to make your spirit alive so that you would engage with him and that he will become the object of your livelihood, your source of life, your source of hope, your source of peace, your source of, 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 of supply, of all, of substance. Of, 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 of every need physically and spiritually he wants to be that source for you but some, but it takes us coming out of this life to begin this 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 new life in him where he becomes your all in all where he he provides for you he he is your life in this life and life to come he he is that source and you do his will not your own you seek after his righteousness and all things will be added unto you you seek his kingdom his seek kingdom is unseen this is why we get lost we get lost in the the kingdoms of this world and we forsake the kingdom that we cannot see but this kingdom that we cannot see is the kingdom that is going to be here be forever and forevermore for all eternity so we have to learn to be engaged more in the spirit realm and in tune with our spirit man and it says because this is this is within that we gain connection with this uh with the uh kingdom of heaven with the kingdom of our lord jesus christ is through the spirit man this is why it says, if so be that the Spirit of God, if the Holy Spirit dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, if you don't have his Spirit, see, Christ is that foundation. It is everything that is in the spiritual kingdom is built upon the foundation premise of Christ. And we are to build our house upon that. And then we are to be filled up with his Spirit, right? And Christ must be in you and you are in him. And there must be a connection to the eternal realm through the Holy Spirit. And he says, if you, if Christ is in you, if he has marked you with his blood, with his, this is why his blood is so important. Because it's his blood that marks you as his. His soul, he poured his soul unto death. And his soul is displacing your natural soul. And now his nature is, is being formed up inside of you as you allowed it as you as you uh, continue in the faith as you continue in the process his life is being being formed up in you as we speak and 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 then he marks you with the life of the spirit the life that he poured out he marks you with that and that old man or that old nature it is becoming 
less and less as the as Christ as the, as his nature is being more and more prominent and more domineering in your life and if Christ be in you his if Christ if if his spirit his soul that he poured out this is why he, he is the new covenant is so superior because the blood of animals you cannot cannot change your nature the blood of that covenant that was still covered or it, it reconciled, you know, blood reconciles you to the spirit realm, uh, you, it, good or bad. It could be witchcraft. They, they offer blood, uh, uh, witch doctors and uh, witches, they offer blood. Satanists, they offer blood because they know it's a, uh, it's a portal. They know it's a way of transference of spirits. They know it's a connection between the spirit realm and the natural realm. So they will offer blood. And Christ offered his blood on the eternal offer, uh, uh, um, altar, I'm sorry, on the eternal altar. And he poured out his blood. It is, but when we, we have to get up on that same altar to transfer our blood into his blood. And so we make connection. We make connection with his blood and we become unified in that blood. And in that, and, and we, his life becomes our life and our life becomes his life. So Christ in you is the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So the spirit that dwells in you is righteous and making you righteous. So the, the righteous pneuma or breath or nature is transforming you to be one like his. And if that spirit is not dominant, it's got to be dominant. It's got to be prominent. It's got to be... It has got to be uh, overwhelming. It's got to be uh, like the word over uh, the overflow. It's got to overflow. It's got to. It's got to. Uh, it can't just take parts of you or a portion of you. He's got to take full dominion or full full dominance to be able to have this kind of uh, of righteousness within. We 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 want. It's full submission. The Holy Spirit comes in measure, but Jesus was with without measure. And, and the Spirit can come in you, but you can dominate. The flesh can dominate. This human, the human nature can dominate it. And this is why we, uh, we have to allow the Holy Spirit through the yielding and submission of our will to be the one in, in control, the one that dominates, the one that is that we we are being led by he is he's got to have full dominion in our mortal bodies we are temples of the holy ghost so we must submit ourselves to this in jesus name hallelujah to his to full dominion the carnal mind can't rule it's by faith we believe on the word of god we believe in this word we believe uh, and we walk it out and we conform our lives to it we conform our ways to it and we allow the holy spirit to take its possession of us and mark us as his but if the spirit of that raised jesus from the dead dwell in you he that raised up christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit convict you quicken you that dwells in you so those things that lack, those things that are deficient, those things that uh, that are inadequate, those behaviors that keep manifesting it, uh, in your life, God will take, if you allow him to take his full reign and his full position in your life, he will subdue those things that that are uh, that are uh, that are manifesting in your life and most of the time those things that are manifesting or have a demonic counterpart that has to be expelled and removed from your soul or from your uh, essence from your nature from your from your from that from your body those things that are like he said he will quicken your mortal body so if you have deficiencies you have pain you have crippling things things that are crippling you things that are bringing disease cancerous tumors or things that are that are that are not from god that are not ordained by god but are ordained by the the realm of 
death, sin and death, those things can be removed and destroyed by the quickening of the Holy Spirit. But the Spirit has to make access into your spirit and it has to flow through the body. And it has to quicken those areas in the body. You got to target those areas so that they will be quickened by the life's blood. The life's blood, Christ's life's blood must target those areas because the Holy Spirit only connects to that life's blood. And when they make connection to your bones, to your body, to your blood, to those areas that are, uh, that are ill, that are diseased, that are defi deficient, he will make alive through the Spirit. He will quicken them those things and make alive and and that is why we can be healed not only in our minds and emotions but we can be healed in the body spirit soul and body blameless before god and we're going to end on that and we'll take it up next time in yeshua's name amen Jesus.